Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us for our third lunchtime concert. I'm delighted to be able to present a seasonal programme with my colleagues Jean, Janine, Claire, Katie, and a little bit later on, Chris Yeager. We've had really good fun putting this programme together and hope that you enjoy it. Vivaldi's Four Seasons are very well known. We're going to play Winter for you today. The music describes poems that Vivaldi read, and this is the poem for Winter. The first movement, frozen and shivering in the icy snow, in the strong blasts of a terrible wind, to run, stamping one's feet at every step, with one's teeth chattering through the cold. The slow movement has a beautiful descriptive idea of sitting next to a warm fire. To spend the quiet and happy days by the fire, whilst outside the rain soaks everyone, to walk on the ice with slow steps and go carefully for fear of falling. And then the final movement, to go in haste, slide and fall down, to go again on the ice and run, until the ice cracks and opens. To hear leaving their iron-gated house, the masters and the winds, and all the winds in battle. This is winter, but it does bring joy. <laughs> Thank you. 
The next piece is a piece from Prokofiev's ballet Cinderella. I had the pleasure of performing this with the Scottish Ballet a couple of years ago. The music, if you don't know it, is absolutely fantastic and I think it's probably better than his Romeo and Juliet. The movement we've chosen to perform is the Winter Fairy. It's very atmospheric, you can really imagine the fairy in the frost.
Tchaikovsky's Nutcracker Ballet is one of the season's favourite ballets. It's hard to imagine now that when it was first brought out that it wasn't very popular. I'm really delighted to be able to offer dancers to go with our Nutcracker today. Ella Parry is going to be dancing to the Sugar Plum Fairy and the Waltz of the Flowers, choreographed by Jackie Shewell, and that's by permission of the Godding Theatre Arts. We also welcome Chris Yeager as our narrator. He's going to set the scene for a wonderful night of parties and dreams. Once upon a time, two children, Clara and Fritz, were very, very excited. You see, it was Christmas Eve, it was snowing, and there was a party at their house that evening. Soon, the guests arrived and the party began. Clara and Fritz sat next to the huge Christmas tree, looking glum. They had hoped Uncle Drosselmeyer would come to the party, but he had not arrived with the other guests. They loved Uncle Drosselmeyer visiting. He was quite eccentric. He looked a bit like a mad scientist, but he was great fun and always gave them the most magical presents you could imagine. All of a sudden, the door flung open with a bang and amidst a flurry of snow, Uncle Drosselmeyer suddenly appeared in the doorway. The people gasped and the room fell silent as he strode across to the Christmas tree, carrying three huge boxes. He invited them to open the boxes. Inside each box was a life-size doll. Everyone watched in amazement as one by one the dolls danced. Fritz's favourite was the toy soldier who marched around the room. Thank you. 
When the dolls had finished dancing, Uncle Drosselmeyer gave Clara and Fritz individual presents, a box of tin soldiers for Fritz and a very special doll for Clara. It was dressed as a soldier in a wonderful bright red coat. Oh, thank you, Uncle. He's beautiful, said Clara. Pulling a chestnut out of his pocket and placing it in the soldier's mouth, Uncle Drosselmeyer said, Aren't you going to offer him something to eat? He's travelled a very long way. And with that there was a... And the shell of the chestnut split open. Why, he's a nutcracker, exclaimed Clara. Fritz was not happy. Although he had a whole box of tin soldiers to play with, he was jealous of Clara's nutcracker and wanted it. He crept up behind her and tried to snatch it. They pulled this way and that, and somehow Clara won. But she toppled backwards, and the nutcracker slipped out of her hand and went crashing across the floor. Clara ran over to it. She was distraught. Her handsome nutcracker had a broken arm. Her uncle tried to comfort Clara, but tying the, by tying the arm back on, he persuaded Clara to lay the nutcracker under the tree to rest while he did some magic tricks for all the guests. Everyone enjoyed themselves, even Clara. Before long, it was time for all the guests to leave. Clara reluctantly said goodnight to her parents and uncle and went to bed, leaving her beloved nutcracker under the Christmas tree. During the night, Clara awoke and decided to go and check her nutcracker. She pulled on her dressing gown and slippers and tiptoed downstairs. As she opened the lounge door, the clock started to chime midnight. The lights on the Christmas tree started to flash and suddenly mice started to fill the room from the fireplace. But not normal mice, oh no, mice as big as Clara. She leapt onto the sofa with a squeal. Then she noticed the Christmas tree with all its glittering ornaments and lights was stretching magically to the ceiling. Fritz's tin soldiers had grown as tall as Clara and when she turned around, she saw that her nutcracker had grown as tall as her, too. A voice behind Clara boomed. There he is! Charge! As she turned around, she saw a giant mouse king on a chariot pulled by cats who started to charge towards the nutcracker. The nutcracker led the toy soldiers into battle against the giant mice. The mice advanced using their long pointy tails as swords. The toy soldiers responded with cannonballs of cheese, which the mice greedily gobbled up. The mice circled him, and although the nutcracker managed to fend them off, there were too many of them. Clara knew she was going to have to save him herself, but what could she do? She grabbed her slipper and did the only thing she could think of. 
threw it at the Mouse King. He fell off his chariot and all the mice ran back to him squeaking in terror and carried him away. The Nutcracker picked himself up and dusted himself down and walked over to Clara. You saved my life, he said. I can never thank you enough. Will you come with me to the land of sweets and meet my mother, the queen? She will be eager to thank you too. Clara was still in shock, not only from the battle, but also that her Nutcracker doll had turned into a real live person. Your, your mother? The, the queen? Does that mean you're a... A prince, yes. Prince of the land of sweets. Prince Nutcracker took her hand as a whirl of snowflakes filled the room and started dancing around Clara and the Prince Nutcracker. The living room changed into a beautiful snowy forest and the sofa with Clara on it started to glide gracefully into the snowy night, into the kingdom of snow. Together, the Nutcracker and Clara began a magical journey through a snowy forest, then across the lemonade ocean in a boat made out of a nutshell. Finally, they arrived in the land of sweets and the prince took Clara to meet his mother, the sugar plum fairy, the queen. The sugar plum fairy was very beautiful. At first glance, she seemed to be wearing a beautiful ball dress. But then Clara realised that the skirt was covered in hundreds and thousands and that the crown was made of icing. The Queen welcomed Clara with a hug. You saved my son from the Mouse King, a thousand thanks. Clara was invited to stay and celebrate Christmas with them. The Sugar Plum Fairy announced that the citizens of the Land of Sweets would dance and entertain them in honour of Clara. The first to perform was hot chocolate. It was dark, creamy, velvety chocolate. Yummy scrummy. <laughs>
They were followed by the Merleton's dance. Merleton is a French cake, by the way, made with nuts. Next came some refreshments for the guests, but before they could drink them, they danced. Coffee from Arabia, with steam rising from the mugs that were clinking together, but not one drop was spilt. <laughs>
And for those who didn't want coffee, there was tea, which came bouncing in in teapots. And finally, the candy canes danced. They were dressed in striped suits and performed an exciting, fiery dance. <laughs> After the candy canes had finished their dance, the prince asked Clara what her Christmas wish was. Oh, I'd love to be able to dance, she said, but I'm terrible. Fritz always laughs at me. The prince took Clara by her hand and said, I think you will be able to dance as gracefully as a flower in the breeze. <laughs> began to waltz. After a while, Clara realised they weren't dancing alone. Lots of flowers were whirling around them.
As they whirled around, Clara grew sleepier and sleepier and sleepier. Clara woke up in her own bed on Christmas morning. I had the most wonderful dream last night, she said, picking up her nutcracker. But then she looked at the nutcracker and his arm was fixed and he was wearing a crown and stuck in his coat were some flower petals. Maybe it hadn't been a dream after all. The end. Thank you very much for watching. We hope you've enjoyed our selection of pieces and it's really put you in the Christmas mood. My thanks to all my colleagues who've generously given their time. Janine, Claire, Katie, Chris Yeager, Ella Parry, Jackie Shewell. Also thanks to the team behind the cameras um, who've helped put it together, Phil Harrison and Darren Oliver. We wish you all the best for a very safe and happy Christmas. Do feel free to sing along to our very final piece, We Wish You a Merry Christmas. Bye.